Thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for your effort. I appreciate that you came to probably one of the last sessions of this KubeCon Paris. Uh, please be indulgent. It's not easy to pass Friday at 4 p.m. Uh, we are all tired. I hope you won't be sleeping during the presentation. Uh, I hope I won't be sleeping too. So we are three on, on stage. We are going to talk about using Kiverno to control um, and apply policies in cloud native projects uh, using Kiverno policies. Raul is going to start and Mariam will talk about uh, recent additions in Kiverno. And I will talk about the future of Kiverno, what happened during the past year, and how Kiverno could change in the next version. So, Raoul? Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, hi, everyone. My name is Raoul Garcia. I work for the DKIX, one of the biggest uh, internet exchange in Germany. And um, yeah, before we start with that, uh, let me quickly introduce uh, who DKIX is and uh, also show you about uh, how the environment is looking exactly before we then move over how we have implemented Kiverno and why exactly. So DKIX is uh, one of the leading operators of IXPs in the world to facilitate the interconnection of networks so that we make uh, improvements into the efficiency of internet services globally. We offer a lot of uh, different services like uh, for peering or other interconnections like Cloud Connects so that um, yeah, we basically play a crucial role in, oh, thank you, a crucial role in the internet architecture for network providers, CDNs, uh, large enterprise networks so that yeah, all of these networks exchange traffic directly um, so that basically we reduce latency increase bandwidth and uh, yeah, increase the reliability on the internet. Uh, here on this map, you can basically see where we are present and where you can uh, basically interconnect with us. How is the environment looking? So we basically have an application platform team, which um, yeah, is providing centralized services like a monitoring, a long-term metric storage, a logging stack, uh, we also provide an OCI image registry. We have a secret store, a code repository, and so on. So basically, we try to provide a holistic stack for all the teams. And then we have different teams that get managed Kubernetes clusters. They get a monitoring stack. They get a logging environment that we take care of. We provide them with ingress controller, with secret store access, and so on and so forth, but all in a way that they still are able to do self-service. So we want the teams to create their deployments by themselves, to use Kubernetes techniques. And um, yeah, all of this, however, in a, in a guideline way. So we don't allow the teams to do basically everything they want. So for that is exactly where Kiverno comes into place. And um, yeah, before we uh, go in and look into some examples of how we use Kiverno. Let me quickly introduce Kiverno for those of you who have not gained experience so far with Kiverno. So what is Kiverno? Kiverno is an open source policy engine which is integrating natively into Kubernetes. It, is, uh, it comes with a huge uh, stack of uh, functions that you can use to validate, to mutate, to generate, or to clean up resources. It also has a possibility to do uh, image signature verification. Next to it, it also has a rich reporting functionality so that you can, uh, you get an overview with a user interface to see which policies or which validations of policies are passing and which of them are failing. Uh, you can also expose Prometheus metrics, which is pretty good. So if you want to see in the long term how your teams are behaving. And uh, yeah, last but not least, there is a huge community in uh, Kiverno existing. So they have already 5,000 stars in GitHub. And um, yeah, there is also a huge um, amount of uh, policy examples on kiverno.io slash policies, where you basically find predefined policies for every use case. All right, let's have a look 
what we are using it for. So at DayKix, since I mentioned like two slides before, we provide teams with managed Kubernetes clusters. We want them to deploy their stuff by themselves. However, we don't want them, for example, to um, deploy privileged containers or also to deploy services of type node port or load balancer so that they don't expose uh, any kind of like uh, traffic to the internet by themselves, which is not regulated by our network team. Next to this, we also prevent them by the, on the management of resources. So let's say we deploy resources to the clusters of the specific teams, like the ingress controller and so on. We don't want them to be able to make modifications on the ingress controller. We don't want them to be able to change the ingress controller, to change the image version, and so on. So we basically have a rule in place that mitigates that they make changes to the managed namespaces that are provided by us. Next to this, um, yeah, we also have a validation policy in place that ensures that no one can deploy any blocking pod disruption budget. I mean, we have seen quite often the situation that teams deploy a deployment where they say replica is one, and then someone goes and deploys a pod disruption budget that says min available is also one. When it comes now to a cluster update, the train of the node would be blocked because the min available and the replica is equal, so the train would not be able, the node would not be able to be trained. In order to prevent this, we have created a Kiverno policy that is preventing this, and I will show you also an example of this on the next slide. Um, yeah, what else do we have? We also have policies in place to mutate. So basically, we add to every pod that the team deploys a node selector so that every pod that the team deploys ends up on the correct node pool. Um, yeah, last but not least, on the mutate side, we also disable the auto mount service account token for the default service account. So in case that any team says that they want to make any calls from their pod against the API server, they have to create an independent service account for this specific service. And last but not least, we also use Kiverno to generate role bindings for user-created namespaces. So in our environment, users only have permission to do operations on namespaces that they create by themselves, and we use Kiverno to create the necessary role bindings so that only the team members of the specific cluster get access to the namespaces that they create by themselves. Every other namespace they don't have access to, they can, they can read in the namespace, but they can't any modification. And this is all being handled by the role bindings that are automatically being created using Kiverno. All right, let me quickly, let me quickly show you an example. So um, what we see here on on the slide is one of our rules that we have in place to mitigate that uh, we run into a, po a blocking pot disruption budget. So what we see here online, let me just make this a bit bigger here. So what we see, yeah, okay. What we see here on line uh, 58 is that we, can, that we are running this rule whenever a deployment scale command is being passed to the cluster. So whenever you say kubectl scale deployment dash dash replica uh, two, for example, this rule is going to check if a deployment that is existing for this scale command, so that you see, for example, here on line 62, is, being, is existing, and if it is existing, then we basically go check the replica that is defined in this deployment, and next, then, we go make another call with this uh, JSON match expression, to obtain the min available definition of the pod disruption budget that is linked to this deployment. So once we got these two numbers, we know how much is the min available and how much is the replica value in the deployment. And next then we compare them to each other. So we check how many replicas have we defined in the deployment and how many min available have we defined in the pod disruption budget. So should the replica in the deployment now be equal to the amount of min available, this policy is going to block the operation. And same is also happening if the replica is going to be less than the amount of min available in the pod disruption budget, so that no user can create any blocking pod disruption budget. 
And I mean, you can see this is only a short overview of what this policy is doing. You can see there are uh, some more rules defined. Um, yeah, and this is basically uh, one of our use cases. We, yeah, we have, I think, currently like 30 um, rules in place in every cluster, which we use to prevent the users from doing anything that, uh, yeah, we, will, we do not allow on the platform. And yeah, by that, I'm done. And give over to Mariam. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Mariam Fahmi. Uh, I am a Kiverno maintainer, and um, I'm working as a software engineer at Normata. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about Kubernetes validating admission policies and how Kiverno uh, provides a full policy management experience to validating admission policies. So, So uh, before digging into Kubernetes validating and mission policies, I would like to explain first uh, what problems do validating and mission policies solve and why do they even exist. So uh, before validating and mission policies, custom policies were enforced through admission webhooks. So typically when you create um, a new deployment, an API, an API request is sent to the API server, and then this API request gets processed, and you know it gets through different phases of execution. Uh, the first stage, of course, is the authentication and the authorization, where you want to know um, who sent the API request and whether uh, he is applicable to perform that action or not. Uh, and the second phase is the most interesting part here. It is uh, the admission controllers. Um, the thing is that Kubernetes run a different built-in admission controller where um, it is configured in the API server. Uh, some of the admission controllers run directly in the API server, whereas some of them uh, can run as an external system. And uh, this external system often is often used when you want to perform complex validations or you know complex mutations. And in this case, you use Kivernu, uh, which will be responsible of receiving the API request from the API server, and then responds back to that request with either allow or deny. And as you see. You know, uh, this can cause some delay or some latency in the Kubernetes cluster. And of course, the cluster administrators will take the responsibility to make release plans for this admission controller. And for that, you know, for, the, for these reasons, uh, validating admission policies comes in. So, yeah, sorry. So validating admission policies provides an alternative solution for admission webhooks, specifically for the validating admission use cases. Uh, you know, in validating admission policies, you, re you write uh, validation expressions uh, in cell language, and these validation expressions are usually uh, evaluated directly in the API server. And, um, as you see, it's directly ev evaluated in the API server, so there is no need for admission controllers at all. And hence, validating admission policies reduce the latency that comes you know, as a result of the round trip between the API server and the admission controller. And of course, it also reduces the complexity of writing and maintaining a uh, an admission controller. Um, yeah. So, yeah. With that said, let's take you know a quick look a quick look on you know how to write a validating admission policy. So, first of all, you write a policy definition where uh, you specify the resources that you wanna check, uh, that you wanna apply the policies to them. 
So for the sake of this example, in the left manifest, you will see that we have a policy definition that matches deployments. And you also specify validation expressions. Those cell expressions are going to be checked against the incoming resource. So in this example, um, it checks for the deployment replica. It makes sure that any incoming deployment should be less than or equal five. And of course, this cell expression will be evaluated to either true or false. So if it is evaluated to true, this means that the API server will allow the creation of such resource uh, because it doesn't violate the policy. Otherwise, if you know, if, if, it, if, it is, uh, if it violates the policy, then the cell expression will be evaluated to false. And the API server will, ha will have to take, you know, an action regarding this, regarding uh, the violation of the resource. And uh, this, is, um, this is important. And this is how the validating and mission policy binding is important for us. So the validating and mission policy binding, as you see in you know, the example in the right uh, manifest, uh, you will see that uh, you can use the binding to specify the validation action that the API server will take in case the resource violates the policy. And in this, exam in this example, it is set to deny, which means that the API server will block any resource that violates the policy. And another thing is that binding provides a scoping to the resources that is mentioned in the policy definition itself. Uh, what does that mean? So as you see in the right manifest, uh, the binding is actually uh, uh, specifies match resources field where, uh, you know, it specifies that it will be applied to all resources whose namespace labels is set to environment as a key. Uh, this means that together with the policy and the binding, it will be applied to deployments, but not all deployments. It will be applied to only the deployments whose namespace labels ha has, you know, the environment label. Yeah. Uh, with that said, uh, validating and mission policies, um, you know, is used to write policy definitions and apply them to resources, but it lacks some important tools that provide a full policy management experience to users, and that's where Kiverno comes in. So Kiverno is a batteries included experience when it comes to uh, managing validating and mission policies. Um, one of the most important tools provided by Kiverno is the Kiverno CLI. So the CLI can be used to apply validating and mission policies to resources locally or against clusters. And this, is, uh, this makes it easier for you to um, you know, uh, simulate the policy enforcements without altering the cluster state. And of course, it makes it easier for policy authors to make adjustments to the policy before deployment and you know, making sure that the policy achieves the, the, the desired outcome. Uh, and of course, users can use the Kiverno CLI to validate resources in CI CD pipelines. And there are many much resources, uh, sorry, there are many much use cases that you can benefit from the Kiverno CLI. Um, I prepared a quick demo, uh, you know, on applying validating admission policies to resources using the Kiverno Playground so that you can see uh, how, how you can you know, run validating and mission policies without actually deploying them in the cluster. So uh, first of all, um, on the left side, we have the policy definition. And here it is, you know, the same example as uh, the manifest we have, I have showed in the slides. So this validating and mission policy matches deployments and uh, it checks that the deployment replica is less than or equal to and uh, yeah, sorry. And we have also uh, the validating and mission policy binding 
Okay, as you see here, uh, the validating and mission policy binding is used to select deployments uh, with a label, with the app label. So again, this policy will not be applied to all deployments. It will only be applied to the deployments who has, uh, you know, the app label. And the validation action is set to deny, which means that the resource will be blocked in case it violates the in case it violates the policy. Okay, with that said, you will see on the right side, uh, sorry, yeah, on the right side, um, uh, the resources manifest. We have uh, two deployments. The first deployment, you know, is called BusyBox deployment, and it has a replica of four. Uh, and as you see here, it has the label app. And uh, the second deployment is uh, the engine X deployment one, and um, it has also uh, the, the, app, the label app, but with a different value. Okay, uh, and you know, it has a replica of four again. So both deployments violate the policy, but one of them, uh, 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 the policy will be applied to, and the other, the resource will be skipped because it doesn't match the policy in the first place. Okay, if we run it, yeah, you will see that uh, uh, only the engine X deployments uh, batches, yeah, uh, you will see that only, <laughs> only uh, the deployments, the engine X deployments that matches the policy, so the policies apply to them. One of them fail and the other pass. Uh, this is because there is a third deployment that has uh, a replica of too, but yeah, I, I forget about it. Yeah, anyways, yeah, here is it. Um, anyway, uh, I provided a link to this example in the slides so that you can enter, you know, click on the link and you can manipulate with the, with the resources furthermore. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. It's ju it is just a basic uh, example. Uh, if you want more examples, yeah, I'm glad to help if you have any specific use case. Okay, uh, the last, yeah, uh, the last thing that I want to talk about is uh, um, the reporting system. So, in addition to Kiverno CLI, Kiverno provides a reporting system that generates policy records as a result of applying validating admission policies to resources. And these records, you know, provide valuable insights and information about the compliance and the state of the cluster, uh, sorry, and the state of the policies in the cluster. And, uh, you know, teams can analyze these reports and uh, identify, for example, the policy violations, and then they can take appropriate actions to rectify them. Uh, you, you can also even have an existing resources, um, and, then you, and then you, for example, deploy the policy. So you want to um, apply this new validating and mission policy to the existing resources. So this is extremely benefit when you want to, you know, have a background scanning for the existing resources. And um, uh, there is some, you know, uh, manifest, some part of the manifest of the policy report. Uh, it shows us the result of applying the validating and mission policy, which is called check deployment replica to the deployment uh, whose namespace is staging an S, and the result is fail, as you see. And why does it fail? Because, you know, it violates uh, uh, the, the deployment replica. It should be less than or equal five, but it seems that this resource has, you know, uh, a higher number of replica. Uh, that's it. If you have any questions, yeah, you know, I will be glad to help. Um, next, we will talk about Kiverno Jason, and Chalwar will, uh, yeah, will take the lead in this part. Thank you. Is it Mirosol? Okay, thanks, Mariam. So, 
My name is Charles Edouard Bautrichet. I'm working at Nermata as a staff engineer in the same team as Mariam. So I started working at Nermata two years ago. I did a lot of contributions to Kivernaut during the first year. And the past year, I spent most of my time doing research and innovation to see how we could do the same thing as Kiverno, but outside of Kubernetes cluster, basically. Uh, so we are going to talk about that, and that's what the two infinity and beyond is about. How do we take what we had with Kiverno working well in Kubernetes clusters and make this generic enough to apply that to other technologies than Kubernetes? So. To start with, uh, we studied the strengths and weaknesses of Kiverno because um, there's something important to realize. It's that Kiverno is a Kubernetes native project. Being a Kubernetes native project is great because uh, it works well in the cloud native ecosystem. It was built for Kubernetes, so uh, it's definitely extremely easy to, to use Kiverno in a Kubernetes cluster, but when you try to use the same tool outside of Kubernetes, what was an advantage at the beginning becomes a problem, actually. So we had to first ask the question, what are the strengths and what are the weaknesses of Kiverno? So for those who know Kiverno, it will be an evidence and obvious. For those who don't know Kiverno, it will be good reasons to adopt it. So Kiverno is simple. Uh, it doesn't require any coding language. And then it's really easy to adopt and to start with. It is Kubernetes native. So if you're running Kubernetes, it's great. But it makes it not portable. And uh, with those attributes, of course, Kiverno grew quickly and became widely adopted. Um, it evolved fastly, but also suffered a lot from the Kubernetes influence. Uh, we added features in Kiverno, but we were always focusing on making those features work well in Kubernetes clusters. So in the end, the more we added features, the more we were coupled with Kubernetes, and the more it was going to be difficult to move outside of Kubernetes. And to do that, we probably wanted to do something different. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, but. Different, but, but the same, actually. And other slides will be same, but different. But yeah, it's kind of similar. So basically, we would like to keep uh, what we love in our toy, but making it more uh, modern and more adapted to the today needs. So for example, most of our users wanted to be able to use Kiverno policies with infrastructure as code. And they wanted to write policies for their Terraform code. They wanted to write policies in the same way they do it for Kiverno, so with just basic YAML definitions in a declarative way. And that's what we wanted to do. Um, for that, uh, we had to escape the Kubernetes jail Kiverno was logged in while keeping the simplicity while keeping the no coding requirement, we wanted to erase the Kubernetes native uh, attribute and make it portable. So for that, we had to look at the anatomy of a Kiverno policy. What is a Kiverno policy actually? What is doing a policy engine? We can summarize the job of a policy engine like very simply, given a, an object, you have an object in your hand, and you have a set of policies. The policy engine is going to take all the rules in your policy, in your policies, 
is going to first determine if the rule applies to the object. If it doesn't apply, it will move to the next policy and the next rule. If it applies, it's going to evaluate the content of the rule against the object you provided and provide an outcome. So is it matching the expected requirements or not? So, and at the end, you have a bunch of outcomes corresponding to the result of evaluating every rule with the given object. And you can make a decision. I am going to validate this object or not. Um, for that, the structure we have here is perfectly adapted. But if we look on the right, there are a lot of things that are very Kubernetes specific, like resource kinds, labels, namespaces, cluster roles. All this is completely Kubernetes specific. So taking this didn't make sense. Keeping the same structure made sense, but without the Kubernetes specific parts. So we had somehow uh, to replace that. The question is, how are we going to replace it with? And we are uh, going to go through a few examples of how we could do that by comparing uh, Kiverno policies and the Kiverno JSON policies. So on the left, we have a Kiverno policies for deployment. So the match statement says any resource that has the kind deployment. We can do the same in uh, Kiverno JSON with something quite similar. Uh, we will match on any object that has a field called API version and the value is apps v1 and another field that has the name kind and the value is deployment. So this time we don't have any dependency on the Kubernetes schema. Uh, instead of API version apps v1, it could be type S3 bucket. It's just the partial definition of an object. If the object we are provided matches the partial definition we have here, uh, it will be matching and same for X3. The second uh, point is how can we, for example, uh, check that the number of replicas of the deployment is greater than two? So in a policy, in a Kiverno policy, we used uh, patterns which represented comparison operations. So we go inspect then in replicas and we apply the greater, uh, uh, greater or equal to two. And this was replaced in uh, Kiverno JSON with something a bit different, but a lot more flexible. So uh, we, uh, are, we replaced validate with assert, and we have all check that are intermediary stanzas. And we are checking that spec. And this time, we take replicas. We apply a comparison operator, so replicas greater or equal than two, and we expect this to be true. So it looks a bit different, but also close to what we had in the, uh, in the first place. But in the second case, we could have other conditions and things like this. So it makes it a lot more flexible. And the third one is about uh, doing uh, array processing differently. So we introduced a way to <coughs> process arrays uh, a bit more elegantly and uh, yeah, a bit more elegantly and with more flexibility. So we now have the tilde in front of the data. That means that um, Kiverno JSON will iterate over every item applying the same assertion to every item in the array. Uh, so basically, this allowed us to write uh, Kiverno policies for um, Terraform code. And in this one, we have a match. This match is going to match on something that's completely different than uh, Kubernetes resource. For this one, it is an ECS task definition. 
So if the payload we are receiving contains uh, any ECS task definition, it's going to check that the resource AWS ECS task definition network mode is AWS VPC. So if it's different than that, uh, the resource will be considered violating the rule and will be reported. So basically, uh, this is the new tool, Kiverno JSON. This one is simple. It has no coding required. It is portable this time, and it gives more freedom for policy authors, allowing, uh, for example, to use it as a Golang library. So one developing his own tool, Uh, yes, uh, sorry. Uh, so it can be used as a CLI tool, as a Golang library, or as an API. And finally, uh, this is mostly a technology. This is not really a complete project because when you are talking about Terraform code, for example, you are probably talking about TF files. Those TF files are not directly expressed in JSON, so you probably have to convert that to JSON before you can process them with Kiverno JSON. Um, so this is more technology than product. There's probably something to build on top of that. Uh, for that, we created two tools. Uh, the first one is Kiverno Chainsaw. It's a tool to run end-to-end -end tests that we used internally and that we open sourced and um, a lot of folks started adopting it, and we are creating an Envoy plugin to be able to perform authorization based on policies in service meshes like Istio. So this is really f a project this time, uh, and this is really outside Kubernetes clusters because uh, we are going to use it for very different things than before. And in the end, the goal is to give that back to Kiverno so that Kiverno we should benefit those evolutions in the, in the future. <coughs> Oops, sorry. And yes, uh, finally, those two tools are working uh, well. So the next challenge is to get this back in Kiverno. That's it. And Thank you. So just to recap, you can join the community. We have a very active Slack channel. We have weekly meetings. You can contribute to our projects, share your feedback, and we hope you enjoyed the conference and the KubeCon this year.